Do you want to know the key to functional, practical flexibility? Well, it's this. You've got to get strong at your maximum range of motion. Okay, continuing on from what to expect from this program, I'm going to make a few points about what not to expect. And with this, I really hope to reduce any discouraging surprises that might disrupt your discipline and training consistency. What not to expect. Number one, progress will not be linear. The first thing you should not expect is that your strength and flexibility progress will not be linear. Actually, instead of a linear progress, it'd be more like two steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, one step back. Maybe even something like this as you work through your sessions. Like uh, one day you'll find that your new maximum range of motion is say 160 degrees. And then two days later, when you do your next session, there might be some regress and you only manage say 150 degrees. Then in your next session, you hit 170, then 170 again, and finally a full 180 degrees. I think it's very unlikely that you'll manage to increase your maximum range of motion by a full five or 10 degrees every single session. Expect to have some days of regress among your many days of progress and don't let it discourage you. So unless you're working your hip adductors all the time, taking them to their maximum range of motion and making them contract intensely and regularly, these exercises are going to do some damage at the start. Good damage, of course, beneficial damage, but at a microscopic level, we're tearing our target muscle cells in a very specific way, and it's gonna feel uncomfortable. And I'm just being honest, really, if you want a lovely, relaxing stretching program, well, you're just not gonna find that here. I mean, I do hope you at least try this out, but like I explained in the previous video, don't be surprised that each session gets you puffing and sweating, and you get a serious workout as opposed to a, a relaxing therapeutic rest. I thought about explaining rep ranges, time under tension, and typical training outcomes, but man, I know, I know, I know, I know that'll only create distracting debates. So I'll say this. It is very unlikely that the high volume of quick reps that we clock up will stimulate any growth in any of the type two fast twitch muscle fibers in our adductor groups. I mean, there just won't be enough load to make us bulky there. So yeah, this program is not gonna cause hyperplasia, which is basically making new muscle cells to increase muscle cell quantity, or hypertrophy, which is making bigger muscle cells to increase muscle cell size. We won't experience either of those outcomes, either hyperplasia or hypertrophy, because we're getting strong by increasing muscle efficiency. And that's when our bodies learn to recruit more existing muscle, not making new muscle cells or bigger muscle cells, but using existing muscle cells. And that's because really the type of strength we're after is strength endurance because that's specific to functional applications like fighting, dancing, gymnastics, and so on, where we wouldn't just fire eight kicks and then walk away. Really what we need is as many in the tank as possible, maybe 15, maybe 115, or as many as it takes to get the job done. And that's why we won't be bulking up there. Okay, that should take care of all of your expectations. So in the next video, I'll go into all of the things you'll need to start and finish a program. I'll see you then. Hey, before you go to the next video, make sure you subscribe for more content just like this because there's a growing library of progressive training videos here on the 10,000 Method channel to help you with your training goals.